In a revelation that casts doubt on the environmental benefits of new energy sources, an apparent scam hidden in the vast expense of China's largest desert, the Taklamakan, has come to light. A video circulating on Chinese social media, sourced from Douyin, provocatively suggests the visual spectacle of covering the entire desert with solar photovoltaic PV panels hinting at the grand ambitions of the Chinese Communist Party in the realm of renewable energy. China is reportedly investing heavily in the development of solar energy projects in its desert regions. Wang Chuanfu, chairman of BYD, a major Chinese auto company, is seen in a video expressing his enthusiasm for harnessing the desert's potential claiming that with just 1% of China's desert area covered with solar panels, the country could meet its entire electricity demand, allowing for the shutdown of all cold-fired power plants. Wang Chuanfu also stated, quote, The sun is eternal. Even if the earth is gone, the sun will still exist. He seems to be deeply fascinated by solar energy, almost as if he has forgotten that he is still on earth. Over the recent months, the Chinese government has been constructing a massive new energy project in the sparsely populated western regions of China. Dubbed, quote, Ning Power Enters Henan, the initiative aims to transport electricity generated in Ningxia to Henan, spanning a distance of 1,634 kilometers and traversing various provinces. With a total investment estimated at 100 billion yuan, approximately 13.7 billion US dollars, the project leverages the abundant sunlight and wind in desert and Gobi regions for photovoltaic and wind power generation. It is said that the total installed capacity of the power supply for the project amounts to 17.6 million kilowatts which will boost the external power transmission capacity of Ningxia's power grid from 14 million kilowatts to 22 million kilowatts. And the new energy installed capacity will surpass 50 million kilowatts. Once operational, it is expected to add 36 to 40 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually to Henan's grid. However, challenges arise due to the precarious locations of some electricity pylons in the, quote, sandy and barren areas, where sparse vegetation, complex terrain, and frequent sandstorms pose risks of pylon collapse, threatening the stability of the transmission lines. In response, the project's construction team has initiated the, quote, greening for line protection plan. Zhang Xiaobo, a technician from the ultra-high voltage company of State Grid Ningxia Power, explained that by planting grass grids, sand dunes can be transformed into fixed or semi-fixed sandy land. At the same time, grass seeds are sown within the grids, and plants such as the Asian needle grass can help gradually restore the vegetation environment of the corridor. Moreover, Ningxia Power has developed an early warning system utilizing artificial intelligence to analyze vast data sets and monitor the real-time operation of the new energy power grid. Energy storage technologies are likened to, quote, power banks, capable of storing excess electricity and rapidly discharging when needed, ensuring grid stability during periods of fluctuating new energy output. Despite these measures, critics argue that the Chinese government's actions remain largely theoretical, with limited practical value. However, the substantial investments and discussions surrounding this project highlight China's significant emphasis on the new energy industry. The country is aggressively pursuing solar energy development, seemingly engaging the United States in a new energy arms race. According to the International Energy Agency, global spending on solar energy production is set to surpass that of oil production for the first time in history in 2023, with solar energy costing 380 billion US dollars and oil at 370 billion US dollars. This development marks a new battleground in the Sino-American rivalry. With China's long-standing dominance in photovoltaic power generation, aided by its political clout, cheap labor, and cunning tax evasion tactics, prompting global vigilance. In the rush to develop new energy sources, China's propensity for taking shortcuts is evident. Indian government data reveals that between 2021 and 2022, India imported solar panels were 3 billion US dollars, 
92% of which originated from China. Recent insider information suggests that India's income tax department is investigating 40 major Chinese photovoltaic companies, including their Indian dealers, for suspected tax evasion. On October 26th, an insider from a leading Chinese photovoltaic company confirmed the ongoing investigations, which have been underway for nearly a month. While the companies are cooperating and no arrests have been made, the results of the investigation are pending and the company's new energy operations continue unaffected. This informed source revealed, quote, if a clear conclusion is reached later, such as the existence of tax evasion, hefty fines might be imposed. Additionally, there are emerging signs of domestic PV components being priced below 1 yuan per watt, indicating that the component prices have actually fallen below their cost price. The source further warned that if some Chinese PV companies start selling at similarly low prices in foreign markets, due to the unbearable cost and supply chain price pressures, there could be a risk of these actions being deemed as dumping. It is not unusual for Chinese companies to be penalized for tax evasion. In August of the previous year, the Indian government investigated Chinese mobile companies such as Oppo, Vivo India and Xiaomi for suspected tax evasion, resulting in substantial fines. Between 2019 and 2022, the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs CBIC, in India also registered cases against 43 other such companies. India, being the third largest global PV installation market, has a booming demand for PV. However, its PV market is highly dependent on imports, particularly from Chinese companies, creating numerous opportunities for the Chinese PV industry to expand and monopolize. This dependency has significant implications for the global PV industry. President Joe Biden, at the opening ceremony of the Global Climate Summit on April 22, 2021, announced that by 2030, the United States is committed to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 50% compared to 2005. Biden prioritizes climate change mitigation and has revised former President Trump's decision to withdraw the U.S. from the Paris Agreement. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has acknowledged that the U.S. is lagging behind China in the production of solar panels and electric vehicles, emphasizing the need for the U.S. to lead the green energy revolution in the competition against China. Europe, on the other hand, has found itself involuntarily embroiled in this global power struggle, especially in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which has led to a scarcity of traditional energy resources like natural gas and oil. This has forced European countries, including Germany, to halt large-scale imports of Russian natural gas, prompting them to seek alternative energy sources such as solar energy. As early as 2005, Europe was already in a leading position in the field of new energy, with Germany accounting for one-fifth of the global solar manufacturing industry. According to the NPR in the United States, Uwe Kratwurst, the marketing director of Heckert Solar, a German solar module manufacturer, stated that they were one of the market leaders in 2012, and he has fond memories of the golden age of the German solar industry in the first decade of this century. The government encouraged solar panels by providing subsidies for feed-in tariffs, offering returns to solar panel owners for providing energy to the grid. These incentives made Germany a global leader in the field of solar energy, marking the country a research and development center for the industry. However, by 2013, the German government amended the law suddenly raising the price of renewable energy, resulting in the loss of 70,000 jobs in the German solar industry and the collapse of the entire new energy industry in the country. Today, China produces 80% of the world's solar panels and dominates the entire supply chain as noted by the International Energy Agency. Financial Times reported that China manufactures 85% of the world's solar cells, 88% of solar-grade polysilicon, and 97% of the silicon ingots and wafers that are central to solar cells. This year, global spending on solar panels is set to surpass that on oil, with the majority of these panels coming from China.
The Chinese government has supported the development of a robust PV industry, creating a quote PV legion that includes companies such as Longi, Tongwei, Flatglass, and Hangzhou First, with Huawei leading in the PV inverter sector. Over the past decade, China has rapidly advanced its PV technology, reducing the cost of PV power generation by 75%. Despite this, is the emerging solar power industry truly beneficial for environmental protection? China dominates the photovoltaic sector, yet simultaneously leads the world in environmental pollution. According to data released by the German data platform Statista in 2021, China emitted 11.5 billion tons of carbon dioxide, accounting for about 30% of the global total. Positioning itself as the largest polluter worldwide in terms of air pollution, according to a report by Voice of America, a research report released by the Energy Policy Institute at the University of Chicago on August 29th, stated that particulate air pollution remains the biggest external risk to global human health. Six countries, including India and China, still produce three quarters of the world's air pollution, with China's air pollution six times higher than the World Health Organization standards. The people of these countries potentially losing up to six years of life. While China has developed numerous solar power projects, it appears that these have not substantially reduced carbon emissions. The Chinese government's emphasis on environmental protection seems to serve more as a guise for the expansion of the new energy industry, including the PV sector, which it largely dominates. This strategy is reminiscent of China's promotion of medical products such as vaccines, drugs, and masks during the pandemic, exploiting crises for financial gain. Current political discourse around green energy often focuses on the benefits of the final product while overlooking the total consumption and pollution generated during the production process. For instance, the PV industry, from manufacturing silicon materials to PV panels and batteries, causes severe ecological damage, with waste products and toxic gases not accounted for in assessments of the industry's environmental impact. Additionally, the recycling of PV products remains underdeveloped, posing significant pollution and destruction risks due to the toxic substances they contain. A significant factor contributing to China's ability to dominate the global green energy manufacturing sector is its access to cheap labor, including a considerable amount of quote zero-cost labor provided by political prisoners. In the clean energy sector, the international community is increasingly recognizing the substantial human rights violations associated with green energy production. In a recent report, the telecommunications giant Huawei, accused of collecting intelligence for the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) and violating human rights, leading to U.S. sanctions, has been involved in the photovoltaic industry for eight years. With support from the CCP, Huawei has grown into a leader in the field of photovoltaic converters. According to Huawei's official website in 2015, the National Energy Administration of China launched the quote, "photovoltaic leader" support program, resulting in significant success for Huawei's photovoltaic converters, capturing over 50% of the market share. In the 2016 leader project, Huawei's smart inverters achieved a market share of over 65 percent. Huawei's official website claims that its quote smart PV products are used in over 60 countries, reducing CO2 emissions by 148 million tons, equivalent to planting over 200 million trees and creating a new model of green and economical electricity use. In 2021, following sanctions imposed by the UK, US, Canada, and EU on CCP officials in response to human rights abuses in Xinjiang, the CCP youth league and state media launched a political campaign against foreign companies like H&M for boycotting Xinjiang cotton. However, the Chinese Communist Party's actions inadvertently heightened global awareness of human rights violations in China and forced labor practices in Xinjiang. Since 2019, various international media outlets and government institutions, including Australia's ABC, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, 
The U.S. government and Congress and the BBC have released investigative reports confirming and condemning the CCP's human rights abuses and acts of genocide in Xinjiang, including forced labor. The CCP has denied these allegations. On April 11th, the Wall Street Journal published an article stating that the solar energy industry supply chain is heavily dependent on Xinjiang. The human rights abuses perpetrated by the CCP in the region and the resulting tensions have left the industry in a state of anxiety. On April 14th, Bloomberg published an investigative report revealing that photovoltaic companies in Xinjiang, such as Xinjiang Dachou New Energy, are suspected of participating in the CCP's forced labor practices, raising moral uncertainties for consumers purchasing Chinese-made solar panels and indirectly supporting the CCP's forced labor practices. The CCP state media, Global Times, denied these accusations, claiming it an attempt to, quote, exterminate Xinjiang's photovoltaic industry. The Global Times cited industry data stating that Chinese polysilicon, a raw material for photovoltaics, production capacity accounts for over 85% of the global total, with Xinjiang silica material accounting for 57 of the national total. Xinjiang's Dachos production capacity was about 15% of the global market share. The report emphasized China's Industry Association, CPIA, showing that in 2020, China's global market share in various segments of the photovoltaic manufacturing industry was as follows. Silicon material, 67%. Silicon wafers, 97%. Battery chips, 79%. And modules, 71%. The Global Times quoted CCP experts saying that the photovoltaic industry is crucial for future discourse power in new energy. The report said that the attempt by the West to suppress Xinjiang's photovoltaic industry and drive the CCP out of the global value chain is challenged by China's photovoltaic industry and the global market. Analyst Li Lin commented that the Global Times report on Xinjiang's photovoltaic industry reveals the CCP's secret agenda in new energy hegemony and indirectly proves that the accusations from Western media are not unfounded. Due to concerns over forced labor, U.S. Customs has seized about 3 gigawatts of solar components exported from China, suspecting they may have originated from slave labor camps. In 2021, the U.S. Senate unanimously passed a bill banning imports of all goods from China's Xinjiang region to sanction severe human rights abuses in Xinjiang. In actual fact, China's photovoltaic industry has not expanded further. Recently, affected by factors such as the decline in silicon material prices, Tongwell, a leading company in China's photovoltaic integration, saw its net profit in the third quarter drop nearly 70% year-on-year. While the net revenue and net profit of TCL Zhongguan, a leading silicon wafer company, both fell by more than 20%. On October 26th, Tongwei's stock price opened significantly lower, falling over 7% during trading reaching its lowest price since March 25, 2021. TCL Zhongguan stock price also fell by more than 4%, reaching a new low since mid-December 2020. Reports from mainland China indicate that the third quarter reports released by these two companies on the evening of October 25 were the catalysts for the sharp decline in stock prices. According to the financial reports, in the first three quarters, Tongwei achieved a net profit of 16.3 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 25%, and a non-net profit of 15.6 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 28.8%. In the third quarter, Tongwei's operating income was 37.4 billion yuan a year-on-year -year decrease of 10.5% and its net profit was 3 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 68%, making its worst single-quarter performance since the first quarter of 2016. Additionally, TCL Zhongquan's third quarter report released on the evening of October 25th showed a decline in both revenue and net profit. 
With operating income of 13.8 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 24%, and a net profit of 1.7 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 21%. TCL Zhonghuan acknowledged in its financial report that the photovoltaic industry's terminal installations and upstream supply have become imbalanced in the first three quarters of the year, leading to significant fluctuations in supply, demand, and industry chain prices. The expansion of production capacity in the manufacturing segment of the industry chain has intensified competition, rapid iterations of n-type technology products and structural adjustments in industry capacity, with outdated capacities facing shutdowns and clearances. Under the dual effects of international sanctions and the raw material market, China's photovoltaic energy industry has begun to decline. With increasing international pressure and domestic economic collapse, it remains to be seen how much longer China can continue on this grisly path of energy.